Well, good morning to you again. Um, as I said in my service, which hopefully you've just watched, um, there is a little added extra for you this morning. Uh, Bishop Jonathan, who said he would do us three sermons, has actually done an extra one for this week. And I didn't want you to miss out on that. And so I've put it on here as an extra to my service. But I thought really you needed to hear the readings that he's based his sermon upon. And they are, of course, the readings from the lectionary this morning. And so the first one is from Romans and it's Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. And it says this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, just at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone possibly, may possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. So you can see some familiar words that we've used already this morning in our service uh, as part of that reading. Um, and the gospel reading that the bishop has been using this morning um, is from Matthew's gospel. And it's Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 35 through to chapter 10 and verse 8. And it says this. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the, go preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles, or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And so it's based on those two readings that the Bishop is going to come now and preach for us. And um, so I hand over to Bishop Jonathan. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to be with you to share in your worship today. Thank you for all that you are doing to support one another and the life of our churches and communities during this strange and difficult time. When I was reading this passage a few days ago in preparation for writing this sermon, it struck me that it's very much a text for our times. What Jesus sees, how he feels and how he reacts all resonate with the situation we are facing 
and have much to say about how we as Christians should respond. Let me explain what I mean. At the start of this passage, Jesus is out and about in the towns and villages, fulfilling his ministry of preaching the gospel and healing the sick. He sees the crowds and recognises, in Matthew's words, that they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. How contemporary is that? And how like what so many people today are feeling? As this crisis goes on, and as the picture, if anything, becomes more and more confusing each day, so many of us are feeling rather helpless and harassed. We may also be feeling a little like sheep without a shepherd because of the constantly changing advice we're getting from the government and the media. There are news bulletins every hour and government briefings every day, and that's all confusing enough. But if people are keyed into social media and are picking up messages and notifications on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and from goodness knows where else, then the whole thing can be quite overwhelming. Add into that the issues that have arisen since the awful death of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis police and the demonstrations that have followed in the USA, in this country and in other parts of the world, and things can seem even more scary and confusing. Part of what is going on, I think, is to do with the fact that many people are feeling fearful and frustrated as a result of the coronavirus crisis and the lockdown. And this has been part of the context within which other issues have been focused and amplified. That is not to say that these issues are not of great importance, and it may even mean that they have a better chance of being addressed as a result. But my point is that we can see perhaps more clearly than before that people today, like the crowds that Jesus saw, are feeling harassed and helpless. And we need to see and understand that just as Jesus did. So that's the first thing here, seeing and understanding the confusion that people feel. The second thing concerns Jesus' reaction to what he saw, in particular how it affected him and how he felt about it. He was not just a dispassionate observer looking down on the fray. No, Matthew tells us that he had compassion on them. He was moved by what he saw. He felt for them. He identified with them. This was a heart response, not just a head response. The word compassion has as its root meaning the idea of suffering with someone. It is about coming alongside someone and sharing their experience, so that to some extent it becomes our experience, as a result of which we want to do something about it. And that compassion is and should be at the heart of our Christian response to what we see going on around us. Because compassion in the sense of feeling with and for people who are suffering is the basis for our engagement with them. It was compassion that the Good Samaritan demonstrated when he got off his donkey and went to the aid of the man lying in the ditch even though this put him at risk from the robbers. Compassion, in this deep sense, is about what goes on in our hearts, but it is not and cannot be just about our emotions. It has also to be to do with our choices and our actions. Compassion that stops with our feelings and does not issue in action is not worthy of the name. It is right, therefore, that we should be moved by what we see going on around us, whether it is those who are suffering as a result of the coronavirus crisis or as a result of racism. But we then need to go beyond that and make decisions about our choices 
and our actions. Christians should be people of compassion and our churches should be places which give us the space to consider our response to what we see around us in the light of the compassion of Jesus for the suffering, for the harassed and the helpless. And that brings us to the third and final thing that we see here, which concerns what Jesus does as a result of his compassion for the crowds and their confusion. Bear in mind that Jesus has already been engaged in ministry in the towns and villages, preaching the gospel and healing the sick. But what happens now is a new phase in his ministry, because what he does next is to choose and commission the twelve apostles, whom he sends out in his name to extend the reach of his ministry. This is the first stage in Jesus handing on his ministry to the apostles, who in turn, after Jesus' ascension into heaven, pass on that ministry to others and ultimately to us. We in our generation are those who are commissioned to carry on the ministry of Jesus to the people of our day, to the crowds who are harassed and helpless on the one hand, and to those who are lost and lonely in their own homes on the other. As we go forward during the current lockdown and beyond, we as Christians and as churches need to be reflecting on and planning for what God is commissioning us to do for the people and communities among whom we live. It is, of course, vitally important that we should be supporting and helping one another, and especially the more vulnerable people within our own church families. But we also need to be thinking about what we can do to go out into our communities to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to bring his hope and healing to those who are hurting. I can't say what that could and should look like for you in your church or in the town and village in which you live. That is for you to work out together under the guidance of God. But I do believe that each and every one of us has been commissioned by Jesus to play our part in that task, however small and however limited our resources may be. So, three things from this very contemporary and very relevant passage of Scripture. Seeing the confusion of the crowds. Responding with compassion to what we see and hear. And accepting our commission to share in the ministry of Jesus sharing the good news about him and bringing his healing and hope to those among whom we live. Thank you for what you are doing already and may God give you the wisdom and the grace you need for the days ahead. Amen. Well, thank you for that, Bishop Jonathan. I'm sure that you will all agree with me that it was worth watching. Um, I just, I had watched it and I thought his words were just so apt for today that I needed to give you the opportunity to hear them. So I hope you've enjoyed that little extra bit this morning. Um, but as I said at the end of my uh, service, it's been good to share with you again. Have a good week and I'll see you next time. Bye.